slash function is a command that allows you to run functions in game. Functions are essentially text files that are a collection of commands that are added via data packs. And we'll go over how to add those and what that means in a little bit. But I've made a little demo function here. We run CCMM tutorial. We get a middle message that says, hi, hello, CCMM tutorial. All right, since that was super uber simple, let's go over how you might actually add a function to your world. So first we're going to pull up the file explorer, but I'm currently inside my .minecraft folder in the saves folder, uh, inside the world that I'm currently playing on, and inside that world there's a data packs folder, and I'm in that folder. As so you see, we've got two data packs in here already, but let's just go through the process of creating one from scratch. Click a new folder, just call it test. Cool data pack name, it's pretty cool. <laughs> inside test, we'll create another new folder. Um, and we'll create a new text document here as well called uh, pack.mc meta. If you're on Windows, it's going to warn you, like, don't change this. It might become unusable. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes, you want to do this. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, not a problem at all. I'm going to edit this file with the uh, Notepad++ here. This is a pretty simple JSON file. This is going to tell the game exactly what the heck is going on with your pack. Basically, you know, what version it is. Um, there's some additional information about it. You can add, like, sub-packs and things like that here. Um, I don't think they're probably called sub-packs here, but... Um, <laughs> It'd be like uh, you know different different versions of your different if your uh, data pack for different versions of Minecraft. Not going to get super in depth into that right now. Basically, basic information you need: pack format, description. <laughs> description may not even be required to be entirely honest. Um, I'm using 57, which is the pack format for 1.21.4 uh, because that's the version that I'm on. Um, you can uh, use the wiki to always find the latest pack version for your version. Um, it changes all the time and by like 10 or 15 like pack format versions per large Minecraft release. Um, so don't try and memorize it. It's not worth it. Just go on the wiki when you need to make this file or copy it from your previous files. It also can be out of date. It's not super critical that it's like 100% correct and up to date. Um, but if you are using an older version, then you may not be able to use some newer commands. Um, just so you're aware. And it will say that it's compatible. You know, you should probably use a new version, but not necessarily required. Anyway, back to File Explorer here. I'm going to go inside the data folder. I'm going to create another new folder. And this is going to be your namespace. So uh, this is basically a short name um, for your data pack that should be unique to you. Um, it should be ideally something that you use consistently across all of your projects. It doesn't have to be exactly the same across all of your projects, but it should sort of follow the same, a similar pattern. Um, and it should be short because you're going to need to type it a lot. Um, I mean, it doesn't have to be short, but unless you want pain, it should probably be short. <laughs> um, so I usually use CCMM as my namespace. Um, in this case, we're just going to use test. Whatever, you know, why not? Inside of your namespace folder, whatever you named it, um, uh, we're going to make another folder called function. If you're coming from an old tutorial or you're confused as to why your data pack is not working, the biggest reason is that they renamed the functions folder to function um, somewhat recently. Or, oh, a big reason. So uh, keep that in mind. It is now function, not functions. Okay. We'll create another new function here and we'll just call this one tutorial. Like whatever, dude. Um, and the uh, extension for function files is mc function. mc function. Boom. And that will allow the game to pick it up correctly. Um, and also, if you're using a code editor like VS Code um, or something like that, then you can might get syntax highlighting and stuff like that. All right, let's open this with Notepad. Just want to keep things simple for you, so, so we're not using any fancy editors or anything like that, just a text editor. All right, now functions are literally just a text file that contains a list of commands. So you write commands in here just like you would write them anywhere else. Unfortunately, you do not get the nice tab autofill that uh, um, whatchamacallit provides, Minecraft provides. <laughs> um, so you do have to memorize some things. Um, but uh, yeah, overall it's pretty much the same experience except for one key thing. You never start commands with a slash. All right, don't do it. Um, it will complain. And in fact, let's do this and then I'll show you how it complains. Um, all right, so let's do slash say and we'll just say this is from the test. Data pack. Boom. All right. Let's go back into game. Let's reload. Function test, and you'll see is not there. It's a shame, you know, because we added the uh, the slash there in front of that command. 
Uh, this is making that, that whole thing invalid. Incorrect. <laughs> um, now, uh, he helpful uh, for us is the game actually tells us that we made a mistake here. So if you pull up your Minecraft output log, I'm using Prism Launcher in this case, so that's what this looks like. Um, and I will go over sort of how to do that in the Vanilla Launcher in just a second here. Uh, but if you are using Prism Launcher, it's here at the top tab, um, and it will tell you, failed to load function test tutorial, right there. And then it'll tell you, unknown or invalid command, slash say. Did you mean say? Do not use a preceding forward slash. Well, there you go. That's basically the answer to our problem. So if you ever have a function that's not appearing for some reason, um, this is a great place to check. You probably just made a typo somewhere, and uh, this will help you out. Um, It'll at least, most of the time the error message is not quite as helpful as did you mean this command, do not use a forward slash. <laughs> um, usually it's a little more ambiguous than that. Um, but it will always at least tell you what line number the error was on. Right, so it's a start. Other than just like digging in the dark trying to find where your error is. Yep. Yeah. Alright, let me pull up the desktop stuff. Okay, so if you pull up your Minecraft launcher here and you go to settings, you can check this little box here. This is open output log when Minecraft Java Edition starts. You should, if you're doing development stuff, you should probably just always have that on. Um, it is incredibly, incredibly helpful. Um, you hit play, and in just a little bit, an extra window will pop up uh, that is the output log. So it has basically, you know, text information about what the game is doing at that current moment in time, um, and any errors or anything like that will happen uh, and will appear in this log. Hmm, nice music. <laughs> Get out of here. Let's quickly fix that issue here. Get rid of the slash. Go back to game. Reload. And now, put your slash function, you'll see that test is here. The test is true. And we got this is, a, this is from the test data pack. Cool. Um, something that, uh, a quirk about functions that might be helpful to know. Um, functions are run, uh, functions run all of their commands if you run a function. How do I uh, phrase this? Um, when you run a function, all of the commands in that function are run um, as the thing that ran the slash function command. Um, so if I run slash function test tutorial here, instead, in this command block, we will get the at. This is it from the test data pack. Uh, but if I run it as me, you will get my name instead because I am running the say command. Uh, when I run the slash function command, and when the command block runs the slash function command, it is running the say command. All right, so that's sort of how that works. Um, maybe take a little, maybe a little confusing, but uh, yeah, basically it counts as uh, as though I had typed all of these commands in chat as myself, you know, like in order, <laughs> basically, somewhat. All right, and there's a special feature of functions that you can do is something called function macros. So this basically allows you to dynamically you know, I'm getting a little complicated with the language here, but dynamically insert uh, any string data information uh, into the function during a runtime. So basically, that means that you can just put data in here that, you know, you don't have to like pre-decide or something like that. Extremely, extremely handy. I'm not going to do any complicated examples right now, um, but we'll do something fun. So uh, let's do something like your uh, XP level is, and then we just do, do this and this. And we're gonna just do, we'll do XP level like this. So macros always start with a dollar sign. And then whenever you want to insert the data, um, you do dollar sign parentheses, uh, followed by the key of that data. Now, if you don't understand data key pairs and how Minecraft stores data in NBT, highly suggest you watch the dash slash data video that I did um, quite a while ago now, but definitely still relevant. <laughs> None of that has changed pretty much. Um, that will explain sort of what this is. This is going to be a key in an NBT data. The structure, whatever. <laughs> structure. <laughs> that's probably a better way of describing it. So the data I'm using, whoops, <laughs> that's not how that works. And, and, oh my goodness, entity add S. So the data that I'm using is my XP level. So it's this XP level up here. Um, that is why I sort of wrote XP level in those caps, and it needs to be specific like that. So now, I'm going to reload. I'm going to run this function with uh, myself. I did not save the file. <laughs> that would be a problem. All right, I'm going to run this function with myself. Um, and you'll see 
this is from the test beta rack, and then your XP level is 14, which, you know, we saw up here is true. Um, you just run it with entity at S. We'll just kind of type that pretty fast. Um, as this, what this is essentially doing is it's taking all of this information we see from this curly bracket here to this one that is off the chat log screen um, and throwing all of this information inside of the function so that we can access it there uh, using the uh, sort of dollar sign in parentheses. All right. So if we, uh, you know, set my experience, uh, set at S, um, I don't know, one level, and we run this command again, notice that that updates correctly and now says that my XP level is one. You can also obviously uh, insert other data into functions. So if I did something like, um, we're just going to keep the same commands in that function. Um, but if I did something like data um, merge storage, mm, I don't know, CCMM test storage, and we just put like XP level um, high in there. <laughs> And then we ran this function instead with a storage, which is CCM test. So my XP level is high <laughs> instead of the actual XP level from my number. So that was the basics of the slash function command. There's a lot, a lot of complexity here um, to be unlocked. Um, slash function is extremely heavily used in all modern maps. So highly recommend that you learn how to use it. Um, instead of doing most of my development, you know, in command blocks or anything like that, I'm pretty much writing maps and stuff exclusively in functions. Um, so, you know, this is a great way to, to sort of create content, not create content, but create awesome projects very quickly in Minecraft, um, especially with syntax highlighter tools like Spyglass, which I might as well show you how to get. Uh, so if we switch over to cursor here, Cursor is uh, basically VS Code, a fork of VS Code, which is a text editor um, plus. <laughs> uh, text editor kind of IDE, kind of. So IDE is an integrated development environment. Uh, essentially just makes developing things easier. So you'll notice immediately it has some nice icons. That's just a aesthetic choice. That's cool. Um, but you'll also notice immediately that if we do something like this, um, actually let's do something a little more complicated. Um, it has autofill for some commands. Whoa, not that much though. Has auto filter commands up for some commands, so we could do something like if score NS, you know, it tells us all the things and it'll tell us if something was wrong. So, uh, I don't know, is one like, uh, bro, that's not how you do that, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Um, and this is all using a uh, an extension for VS Code called Spyglass. So, if you come down here, uh, there might be some secret things in here. It's fine. And you just search, sp uh, sorry, uh, is it called Spyglass now? Yes, okay. Search Spyglass, first thing comes up, Datapack Helper Plus is indeed Spyglass, that is that is correct. Um, and you install this, this will get you syntax highlighting in all of your MC function files, um, stuff like that, so enjoy, that's how you do that. Anyway, hope that you found this tutorial helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.